haven't stepped up to try to help us. And yet they are interfering. They're interfering in our, in our um, skies, in space, around the Earth, around the moon, apparently. They are interfering with our commercial flights, our military flights. They are seen often around military bases and nuclear power plants. Uh, they seem to have a very vested interest in our military. They're buzzing our aircraft carriers at sea. We have now have documented evidence released by the Navy itself, and they, they're saying it's true, it's accurate, it's real, of um, UFOs. The government even had the ATIP program which cost them $28 million, to investigate not if these things are real, but if they present a threat. And that's the T in, in the ATIP, threat, potential. So, I mean, uh, the government isn't saying that they were investigating if UFOs are real or not. They're investigating if they were dangerous or not. And they came to the conclusion that as far as our military and aerial stuff goes, they, they present no overt threat. And yet we have had cases where apparently they have been around military bases, um, fired on a, a missile we were launching, um, caused a blackout at, at another base, caused uh, missiles to start to self-launch themselves uh, at another base. I mean, so it's not exactly as if they are hands-off with all these things. Well, maybe they're trying to prove a point to us, but we're not intelligent enough to realize it. That's the whole issue. Oh, I doubt that. I mean... <laughs> Really, uh, you know, if you ever saw the old original movie, The Day the Earth Stood Still, which I think was the far better of the two movies, uh, it, it, it'd be very simple to simply come to Earth and broadcast a message saying, you people are on the edge, and if you don't knock it off, we're going to have to interfere, or you're going to end up destroying yourselves. You don't really have to uh, keep buzzing our for decades and decades and decades our military bases, our military planes, our commercial aircraft, wherever they happen to be flying, and, uh, and our ships at sea. I mean, oh, oh, uh, isn't that a rather um, ridiculous way to go about it? And it must be extremely expensive for fuel consumption on their part and time as well. So uh, I kind of discount that idea. I do, too, because, I mean, you know, let's face it. Yet I don't think they care about what we do to ourselves, as long as we don't do it no, to them. I don't. I don't think they give a darn about us. I really don't. I think they, they are either, and then I've said this repeatedly, they're either amoral, they have no morals at all, or they're immoral. They, they know what morals are and they just don't care. And I kind of am not sure which it is. But they treat us as if we're nothing. But there is things we can do. Again, we can try to find out what do these organs all have in common in cattle and sheep and things. What is it that that is concentrated in any way, shape, or form in these particular organs? And is there a commonality, or isn't there? Uh, it, are, are they uh, are are they extracting the corneas from the eyeballs of these things and using them for themselves? That sort of thing. We could find out if we start really investigating it. It's all we can do. We can wring our hands and say, I don't know, I don't know, uh, oh, they're kind or they're terrible or whatever, but whatever it is, we're the victims and so are our animals of this planet. And it's, it behooves us to take rational, scientific steps using the scientific method to try to resolve some of these issues. If someone keeps stealing something from your house over and over and over, you start looking for commonalities. What is it they keep stealing? And then you think, why do they keep stealing that? And then you can maybe come up with some more reliable answers or at least narrow the field. This is what we need to do. We need to start fighting back. And the way we do that is through science and the scientific method. Maybe they have, and they just don't want to tell us because, let's face it, if you sit there and told the population the truth, maybe if it's not it, it good it's not a good package it's a bad package as somebody in washington dc would say you would have mass panicking now i've had people on the show say oh we wouldn't people wouldn't panic if they said ufos exist uh, that there is really mutilations going on by aliens uh that he, the human mutilations is going on a lot of people are in denial about this stuff they keep saying, again, like I said earlier, I got a couple people that have been on my show in the last couple months. It's swore up and down these mutilations are done by our own government to confuse us. You know, some of those pictures you can see on the Internet of human mutilations. I had somebody who worked for the government. It sent me over, you know, a whole bunch of mutilation pictures of humans. 
And I, I tell you what, I found myself staring at them too much and finally took it off the computer. And it wasn't just one or two or three or four. I think there's a lot more human mutilations going on. This just doesn't make the news. It, it's simple as that. Not in this country anyway. True. And um, I don't think people would panic if we find out UFOs are real because the majority of Americans already think UFOs are real. Uh, I think they actually might panic if they found out that they were simply abducting us willy-nilly and at random and by the thousands every year and doing this. That would scare you. I mean, it may not scare me or it might not scare you, but it would certainly scare you if you had children, for instance. Would you send your child to the little local store to pick up a bottle of milk if you knew that was happening? Would you go out at night if you knew that was happening? I mean... If, you suddenly, if the government suddenly said, yes, there are UFOs, yes, there are aliens, and yes, they're abducting us by the thousands, and they're doing horrible things to us, and we can't do anything about it, then you, you might get a panic then. Uh, I, I would certainly start worrying about whether I went out on my back porch at night or whatever, you know, and uh, to look at the stars. I mean, I, I would have to think, really, and I think I'd be putting locks on my doors, good ones, so the ones I've got, and and is the government doing it? Well, if the government's doing it, it's doing it all over the world. So which government? Are all the governments of the world in collusion? Because the, these mutilations are happening everywhere. So I find that falls down. It's just too weighty. Um, if it's a hoax in that respect where our government's doing it to, to scare it, and what, and what would be the purpose? Why? What would we, the government get out of uh, 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 out of? pretending that there's mutilations all around the planet and that it might be UFOs. What purpose would that serve? You wouldn't, the expense would be incredibly enormous. It would have to be an international conspiracy of the biggest type in history. And what would be the reason? I don't, I, I don't think it's the government's doing it. I, again, no, some no. of these mutilations of humans, it's come from the rainforest. It's come from Brazil, Argentina, uh, China, you name all these places that, that is happening, our own country. And, and, and it scares me the point you mentioned about sending your kid to get milk. How about going camping? How about going out for a ride at night to, you know, go down to the beach in your car? I mean, it, again, you don't, it, it's scary. I mean, because then you, you have no I, control of your I, life. Yeah, I mean, I, you could take a walk in a quiet country road or taking a hike or, or having a picnic in a park or going to a state park. And by the way, there does seem to be something happening in our national parks and state parks, as David Polites mentions in his books, Missing 411. So, uh, uh, yes, it does seem to be that if you're off and alone and by yourself, this can happen and happen a lot. Or it can happen to entire isolated villages or groups of people. And apparently it's happened throughout history. And... If this is the case, and the government suddenly said, okay, we have no control over this, and yes, it can happen to you anytime or your children, you would, I think you'd start getting a bunker, and maybe not a panic per se, although I think there would be to a certain degree, uh, at least at first, but you'd get a bunker mentality. It would, uh, it would interfere with our economy. People wouldn't want to drive to work. They wouldn't want to do the night shift. They wouldn't want to be a lone security guard out walking a perimeter somewhere, uh, that sort of thing. So... Maybe the government simply doesn't tell us because it would mean a literal breakdown in our society and our economy. People just wouldn't want to be left alone. But you know what? Look what happened in Watts. You know, the rioting. Okay? And it happened really fast. Now, if all of a sudden the government came out tomorrow and said, you know what? There is UFOs. People are being abducted. They're being taken and not returned. They're also being mutilated, and we're finding their bodies. You know what? It, 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 you know, people claim that they're in their bed and they've been abducted and, and taken aboard UFOs and, and all this stuff. You know, Terry Lovelace, I don't know if you know who he is. He uh, was a former uh, U.S. attorney. Uh, attorney. He uh, ha went, was in the Air Force in the 70s, and him and his buddy went camping they thought they were in a state park well they happened to be on federal property they saw a ufo but before they saw the ufo they saw some weird lights and then the lights got closer and closer and then all of a sudden it landed and they saw aliens the next thing they know they were abducted they were taken aboard a craft they were stripped naked 
They saw other people naked, holding their clothes. They heard screams. And like James said earlier, they were released. But it makes you, you know, if you were told that, you wouldn't want to go out of your house. But you know what? Even being in your house doesn't mean anything. They can just come and get you. We have no control. We would seek refuge. We would definitely be afraid of the dark. I think the idea of any kind of night shift work anywhere in the country or anywhere in the world would cease abruptly. Uh, people would be afraid to even to go out in the day, especially if these things have cloaked capabilities. Uh, you'd, you'd, you'd want to be in mass numbers. You'd, it, 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 honestly, the, go- the government may not be telling us because they don't want that to happen. It may not be so much panic as that we just get into a bunker mentality and want to hunker down. Whether it does any good or not, doesn't matter. The um, panic, the, the fear mode isn't an exactly the most logical or rational mode to be in. And whether it's panic or just this horrible dread of, of venturing out alone for any reason. I mean, even taking the trash out of I mean, people disappear, have disappeared in history. Uh, one boy disappeared going to the well to get water for his house in the snow for Prince leading there and then simply stop. It's, it's, it's nothing around, no animal tracks, no, none of his tracks. It was as if he was According to the actual investigator, he was lifted up into the air and never seen again. Now, that's going to have an effect on our economy and our ability to function as a civilization. A major, devastating, negative effect. Well, then so it, maybe he's just letting us be abducted and letting this happen to us rather than have to face that possibility. Think about it. You, you, you think that the average person would think, well, what good is it? The police isn't going to be able to protect me. The military can't protect me. Nobody can protect me. And people will be panicking because when you start talk, talking anywhere from 40 to 50,000 people a year, just totally vanishing. That's a lot. And that's from the United States alone. That's not counting all the other countries in the world. Together, it's, it's over several hundred thousand a year. Oh, yeah. I was reading the ports uh, re- here recently by the FBI, it's world statistically, a year, how many people are missing. And they're saying up to, it can be over 300 to 700,000 700, people can be vanishing each year off of our uh, face of our earth. Where are they going? They're going somewhere. You're, you're talking about a part of a million every year. I mean, these are not tiny numbers. And, and, and I was talking to one host on a radio show and talking about it, and he said, well, maybe they were kidnapped, or maybe, you know, someone... I said, no, that's all been accounted for. When you take that out of the disappeared population, you're still left with this huge number of permanently disappeared that we can't account for under any of the normal means. So what's happening to them? Where are they going? What's being done with them? And how can our government not be aware of this and not know what's going on to some degree? They, they, know. they know. They absolutely know. I mean, again, why is it when people go investigate at the national forest okay uh you talk about all the people missing in the national forest they're going camping what better place to snatch people that's number one two is why don't the uh, park police really investigate they seem to you know do a half but you know investigation and they close the book on it it's like they already know they what's even- going on I mean, they search for the person, and that's it, but they don't even keep records. That's what amazed David Pilates was that he, he, he contacted the national parks to try to find out uh, about the numbers of people disappearing, and they, they didn't keep any list of the numbers disappearing. Uh, that's amazing. Uh, you, you would, you would it, it, it boggles the mind that they wouldn't have done that. You would think that just for safety precautions, like individuals to keep getting lost, or are they getting lost mostly? Okay, we need to mark the trails better. But they're not keeping any lists at all of the numbers have disappeared. And there's something screwy about that. There just is. Well, that's because they know what's going on. Anyway, we're going to be on break here. We'll be back at five after the hour. And you're listening to Night Dreams Talk Radio After Dark. So hang in there, and we'll be back with you, Rob, here in about eight minutes. Thought that rings 